What's up everyone? Justin here back with a new wrestling video uh, from my series. Check out the playlist year, not year up, feuds in wrestling. I got so many damn videos, so many playlists. Uh, check them all out. Check out the year in wrestling playlist. Check out year in wrestling reloaded playlist. So many playlists. This is Feuds in Wrestling. Feuds in Wrestling 1989. A pretty damn good year for a lot of awesome feuds in wrestling was 1989. I don't, uh, when I, at the time, 1989, I was five years old, so I don't remember watching these feuds live much. But, of course, as, as I got older, teenager, I went back, watched everything that happened in 89. Anyways, feuds in wrestling, 1989. These are the feuds in wrestling for the year 1989, in my opinion. My favorite feuds from 89. If you're a younger fan, you were not born in 89, I'm telling you, you should go back on Peacock, watch the entire year 1989, WWF, WCW, NWA. If you love wrestling, if you love, love the business, and you're a younger fan, you should want to know your history. Definitely, you should want to know your wrestling history. Go back, study it, watch in 1989, and these feuds. Up first... I'm gonna, I'll try to start in the beginning of the year, but I might go all, all over the place. Anyways, uh, let's start with, I'm trying to look at uh, when these feuds started. A lot of them were in the summer. A lot of them were in the summer or the spring or the fall. But uh, a feud in the beginning of the year kicked off Basically, at the end of January, and uh, when Ricky the Dragon Steamboat returned to the NWA on NWA TV on TBS, he returned. I believe he was a mystery partner of uh, Eddie Gilbert's against, I think, Ric Flair and Barry Windham. I'm not sure, but. Anyways, let's go to February. Shy Town Rumble pay per view. Ricky the Dragon Steamboat gets his uh, world title shot against the Nature Boy Ric Flair for the NWA title. Before this, uh, he did have world title shots, but he did not win. Shy Town Rumble, if you have not seen it, watch it for Ric Flair, Ricky Steamboat, the main event. Awesome matchup. I believe it went 20 minutes. These two guys had so many hour-long matches. And all of them that I've seen on TV or pay-per-views or DVD releases were great. And I'm sure the live event house shows they had were fucking amazing matches. Anyways, chi Rumble, Ric Flair, Ricky Steamboat tore it up. Ricky Steamboat becomes a world champ for the first time. It was historic. Also, I'm not going to give you every spoiler, but uh, <laughs> it's like well over 30 years ago. Also, Flair Steamboat. Shy Town Rumble. They had a great, great matchup at Clash of the Champions 7 in uh, New Orleans, the Superdome. Two out of three falls. It was epic. Also, their final matchup in 1989. They had a trilogy. Three of the best fucking matches I've ever seen two opponents ever have. Just what a great rivalry, what a great feud Flair Steamboat was. Their final matchup was at Wrestle War 89 in May. It was damn good. My favorite of their matches in 89 was Clash of Champions 7. 
So Flare Steamboat, a must, must watch for 1989 if you're a wrestling fan. So let's go to another feud that I guess was in the beginning of the year. The Midnight Express against the original Midnight Express. The original Midnight Express was uh, Randy Rhodes and uh, Dennis Condry against Stan Lane and Bobby Eaton. The new Midnight Express. They had a match at, I believe, Chi-Town Rumble. And after that, I think the feud was over. But it was a pretty good feud. Midnight versus Midnight. Uh, Jim Cornette got busted open by Paul Heyman. Paul Lee dangerously was actually managing the original Midnight Express. Uh, before that, Dennis Condry, lover boy. He went missing, like after 86, he was just gone and disappeared. So Stan Lane took the place of his. Or Stan Lane took his place, and in my opinion, Sweet Stan and Bobby Eaton were a better Midnight Express, in my opinion, than the original. But uh, yeah, Jim Cornette got busted open on NWA TV by uh, Paul he dangerously and then uh he had a white jacket and he was carrying around the white jacket on tv it was all bloodied it was pretty damn awesome and i'll be back in a second so as i was saying midnight express against the original midnight express it was pretty damn good because paul e dangerously aka paul Heyman. And Jim Cornette were feuding, and Paul, he dangerously busted open Jim Cornette with his giant cell phone. That was good shit. And uh, <laughs> Jim Cornette bled all over his white suit jacket, and then brought on TV and was holding it up, cutting promos. So Midnight vs. Midnight Express was a pretty good feud, but it was kind of short. This was also in the beginning of the year in spring. It started on the main event when Miss Elizabeth was off. Th Macho Man was thrown out of the ring. He took out Elizabeth and she was out. It was against the Twin Towers, the Mega Powers, and uh, Savage just continued the match. Or I don't remember. Big Boss Man or Akeem just threw him back in the ring. Hogan checked on Elizabeth, carried her to the back. Fun fact, it was actually my hometown, Milwaukee, and I was actually there as a kid for the main event, this episode. I don't remember it much being there, but I do remember as long as hell, long-ass tapings. They taped, like, main event and then a whole bunch of other matches. It was like a four-hour taping, at least. Or over three and a half hours, it felt like. So uh, Hogan, Savage, and Savage backstage just cut an awesome promo on Hogan. He's like, "You, you, I see how you look at Elizabeth. You lust, you lust for Elizabeth. That was great shit." Then he's like, "You're too much of a coward to uh, give me a or to ask for a title shot. You're too much coward." To fight me because, you know, I beat you. He said all that to Hogan. Then he attacked Hogan with the title. Hit him on the head, I believe. Busted open Hogan backstage. Elizabeth was screaming. <laughs> and before Macho Man, I believe, came in the room, Hogan was holding Elizabeth's hand, like, praying. Like, please be okay. Please be okay. It was hilarious. Like, she was dying. Come on. She was in dying. Anyways. Hogan versus Savage in 1989. Really good feud. Lasted pretty long. Went to, or kicked off at the main event. And went, and main event I believe was in February. Went to WrestleMania 5 to main event. That was in April. I don't know when this show was, but they had other matches in 89. Maybe at Boston Gardens. At MSG for sure. Also they had a big match in London. And I know it was in 89. But I don't know what month. I 
think Hogan was the world champ at that London show. He just showed that match. Uh, Hogan Savage in London, 1989. They just showed it on Peacock on the best of WWE uh, UK matches. So, uh, Hogan Savage, very good feud in 1989. I did not mind. Hogan won the world title. I loved it because I was a Hawkamaniac. So, more feuds in 1989. Rick Rude, Rowdy Piper had a short feud, but it was pretty damn good. They had a cage match in MSG. And the feud started when Piper screwed Rick Rude out of the IC title at SummerSlam 89. I guess he mooned him. They wouldn't show it on camera, but he lifted up his kilt, and Rick Rude was pissed that he got mooned, I guess. And then he lost the IC title. Which, the finish was horrible, because Warrior, like, back suplexed Rick Rude for the three count. What the fuck is that? Or lame finish, because that's not a finishing move. But anyways... Other feuds uh, in 1999, this was not good, but it was a feud. Hawk Hogan, Brutus the Barber Beefcake against Macho Man and Zeus. I understand why they did it. I understand why Vince and WWF did this feud. They wanted Zeus involved in the product. Because a No Holds Barred was being released. The movie. The wrestling movie. Also, I like No Holds Barred. I think it's not a bad movie. Some might say Hogan sucks as an actor. I didn't think he sucked in that. Anyways, uh, again, I like No Holds Barred. I will admit that always. But uh, Hogan, Brutus, Beefcake, Zeus, and Macho Man was not a good feud. They had a main event match at SummerSlam 89. And uh, then they had a steel cage match. A no holds barred steel cage match. I think it was on pay-per-view. Also, it was on a Coliseum video release super tape. I forget what. I think it's super tape volume 1. The cage match with Hogan, Beefcake, Zeus, and Macho. Also in 89, my God, Hogan and Savage wrestled a ton in singles matches. A lot. They were on a Coliseum Home video release, I just remembered, of a Hawkamania video. And then they were at MSG, London, WrestleMania. There's so many matches they had. So, uh, other good feuds. Terry Gordy. I'm not sure how long this lasted, but I, I liked it. Terry Gordy versus, this was a good feud. Terry Bam Bam Gordy, great big man in 1989, part of the Freebirds. Terry Bam Bam Gordy against Dr. Death Steve Williams. This was pretty damn good. They feuded in 89. I think that a match at a Clash of Champions, I think is Clash of Champions 8, maybe. And then they had a War Games with the Freebirds and Terry Gordy against the Road Warriors and Dr. Death and the Midnight Express. So I liked the Terry Gordy, Dr. Death feud, but it was kind of short, lived. A uh, Road Warriors, Skyscrapers, Sid, Dan Spivey, the Skyscrapers with uh, Teddy Long, holla, 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 as their manager in 89 against the Road Warriors with precious Paul Ellering. These two teams were fucking monster tag teams. Just, they looked like monsters that were going to kill each other. Just giant fucking guys. All four of them looked like fucking not human because they were so big anyways uh they had a big match at halloween havoc 89 it was good shit the crowd was really hot for it uh, road warriors skyscrapers in 1989 i enjoyed that feud it would even go into 1990 when uh dan spivey 
or Sid got injured. So then uh, Mean Mark, the Undertaker, took the place of Sid in the skyscrapers. And then Dan Spivey, just on a Clash of Champions 10, or the Clash, I said that was Terry Gordy. And Dr. Death, I think that's Clash of Champions uh, 8, not 9, 8. If I said 9, it was 8, I think. Anyways, Road Warriors Skyscrapers at Clash of Champions 10 in 1990. Dan Spivey decided to snap and just beat the fuck out of the Road Warriors with a steel chair and lay them out. And then after that, he just quit because he was sick of the... Backstage uh, crap. Probably hated Jim Hurd. And I don't blame him. Jim Hurd fucking sucked. He's a, a guy that ran a company. Or tried to. He had some of the best talent in the world. But he, he sucked. I, I'm pretty sure Jim Hurd was not the booker. In 89. I hope not. But we did fucking see the ding-dongs up here. So maybe he came, I know he came up with the ding-dongs but I don't know who the booker was but 1989 NWA had some fucking awesome feuds and talent. So anyways uh, Great Muda Sting feud was awesome in 1989. They wrestled uh, four matches that I know of. That I own on DVD. Anyways, they wrestled two tag matches at Clash of Champions. They had a tag and at Halloween Havoc 89, they had the first ever Thunderdome cage match. Sting and Flair against Great Muda Terry Funk. That was awesome. That tag. I, I still love it and watch it to this day. Also, as I said, Sting and Muda. Great feud in 89. They feuded over the TV title. Two tag matches and they had a singles for the TV title on a, a Power Hour, NWA Power Hour, and where else did they wrestle? Uh, Starcade 89, I believe they also wrestled in the tournament. Also, uh, about NWA Power Hour, had some really good matches and talent on it. Peacock, what the fuck? Get Power Hour on the Peacock, on the cock. I'm, I want to watch it, because I'm an old school fan. I would like to see Power Hour on the cock show up, but I doubt it will. W, uh, not WCCW, I think they were gone by 89. They might have been renamed USWA, or maybe they were still around. I'm not sure when the name change happened, and Jerry Jarrett took over. Anyways, uh, this might have been 1990, but I'll just mention it. Uh, I thought it was a good few. Jeff Jarrett and Jerry Lawler. Also, Cactus Jack and Jeff Jarrett had good matches in USWA in either 89 or 90. Also, other good feuds. Um, My God, Terry Funk, Ric Flair, so good. Awesome feud. They had a match. The Great American Bash 89. Wrestle War 89, Terry Funk turned on Flair. Power drove him on a table that did not break or give. I could see how fans back then would legit believe Ric Flair broke his neck from uh, Terry Funk. Power driving him on it. But anyways, that match at Great American Bash 89 was really good. Then that tag match at... Uh, Halloween Havoc in the Thunderdome. Then they had the I Quit match at Clash of Champions 9. I think it was Clash of Champions uh, 9. Anyways, Ric Flair, Terry Funk, I Quit was awesome at Clash of Champions in November of 89. Rick Rude, the Ultimate Warrior. I enjoyed that feud. 
But uh, Rick Rude had to fucking carry the warrior because he was a sack of shit and just a fucking bag of fucking muscle and steroids that couldn't do jack shit but run to the ring and shake the ropes. That's all he could do. He was super over, but it was a sign of the times. That's why he was over, I think. Because Warrior did not look fucking human. In 1990, he was roided out of his fucking skull. He was so roided up. It was ridiculous. Those fucking ties he had on his arm. His fucking muscles were like... And those ties were like bigger than my fucking head. Just... He looked ridiculous. He looked like a fucking comic book come to life. My God, Warrior must have been on so much of the fucking just steroids. So many roids. Uh, and I'm sure he had roid rage also. Poor Rick Rude had to try to get good matches out of him. And he actually did get good matches out of him. But uh, Rick Rude won the IC title at WrestleMania 5. Then he had to drop it to the Warrior at SummerSlam 89. It was still a good feud for 1989. Rick Rude, Ultimate Warrior, another good feud. Lex Lugert, Ricky Steamboat in the summer of 89. They had a really good U.S. title match at Great American Bash. 89 Glory Days. Another good feud. Uh, Hulk Hogan, Big Boss Man. They had a steel cage match at... On a Saturday night's main event, I think it was in June or July 89. Maybe it was May, I'm not sure, this exact month. But that cage match is pretty damn good on Saturday night's main event. Where Zeus was standing in front of the door and wouldn't let Hogan go in the cage at the start of it. And uh, as a kid, legit, I was scared of Zeus. When I was a kid, I was fucking scared of Zeus. The guy freaked me the hell out. Because honestly, I thought Zeus was going to kill Hogan on uh, WWF TV. So Hogan boss man had a good cage match on a Saturday night's main event. Then they had another good cage, really good cage match on a Coliseum home video release of a Hawkamania video. Just called the best of Hawkamania I had as a kid growing up. I watched it a ton. Anyways, Big Boss Man and Hogan have a cage match from Madison Square Garden on that Coliseum home video of best of Hawkamania. And it was awesome. Hogan fucking worked really hard in that cage match. He actually suplexed the big boss man off the top of the cage. And he was standing on the top rope. That was an impressive suplex. And damn impressive uh, superplex. Because big boss man legit looked like he was like 350. Or at least like 330 at the time. 330 pounds. Hogan threw him into the cage like four times, back and forth, running with Boss Man's head into the big blue cage. Boss Man bled. I think he got, might have got busted open. I don't know. I think he bladed. But he could have got busted open the hard way. Who knows? Hogan and Boss Man feud, it was short, but I fucking love their matches in the cage. They had two cage matches in 89. They probably wrestled at other house shows, but I'm not aware of it, and I've not seen their other matches. Uh, another good feud. Uh, Tito Santana, Rick Martel, Strike Force broke up. Rick Martel left Tito at WrestleMania 5. They feuded through the whole summer, basically. And uh, it was good. Tito Santana, damn good worker. Rick Martel, very good wrestler. The guy should be a Hall of Famer for sure. Former AWA world champ, former tag team champion in WWF. 
Rick Martel was fucking great. It's a worker. Hall of Fame talent. And he had a damn good character. The model Rick Martel. That was a good character. Um, Other feuds in 1989. Uh, the final feud I have down here. Uh, well, to the two final. Paul E. Dangerously versus Jim Cornette. That was a really good feud I loved in 1989. My final feud of 89 I really loved. And I thought it was a feud of the year. Um, the Steiners in Doom. They had, I think... I believe they had one, uh, maybe a couple matches when Doom, Ron Simmons, Butch Reed were under the masks. That was so stupid. That was so obvious who they were. But uh, anyways, the Steiners and Doom were awesome tag matches. They had a great one at Halloween Havoc 89. And I really enjoyed it. So there are my feuds in... Feuds in Wrestling for 1989. I will be back when, I don't know, to do another Feuds in Wrestling for 1990. Here are some of the feuds that I ran down were some of my favorites in Feuds in Wrestling for 89. Lex Luger, Ricky the Dragon, Steamboat, Rick Rude, The Warrior, Hogan, Big Boss Man, Ric Flair, Terry Funk. Tito Santana, Rick Martel, Sting, Great Muda, Road Warriors, Skyscrapers, Terry Gordy, Dr. Death, Steve Williams, Rick Rude, Roddy Piper, Steiner's Doom, Midnight Express vs. Midnight Express, Hawk Hogan, Macho Man Randy Savage, Rick Flair, Ricky the Dragon, Steamboat, Paul, E. Dangerously, Jim. Cornette. There are my feuds in wrestling for 1989. I hope you enjoyed this video. I enjoy doing it. I love talking about the past and wrestling history and the wrestling I grew up on as a kid it was definitely in 1989 and into the early 90s. Before the Attitude Era, or right at the start of the Attitude Era, I'd say 97. I was a teenager, so I absolutely loved uh, the Attitude Era. So uh, I'm very lucky as a fan that I got to live through the Monday Night Wars and through the late 80s, just awesome times and awesome eras in wrestling. Again, my next Feuds in Wrestling video will be on the year 1990. When am I going to do it? I don't know. When I have free time. Like, comment, share, subscribe. What are some of your favorite feuds in wrestling for 1989? Leave them in the comments. If I didn't mention one that you liked, leave it in the comment. I would like to hear it. Bye for now, everybody.